Hey everybody, this is Adam Kogish, and I'm here with LaTanya of Houston Normal. She's the executive director. We are at the Texas State Libertarian Party Convention. LaTanya, it's been an honor getting to know you just over the last year, seeing you around at events involved with the LP, but especially to see that you recently took on this position with Houston Normal. What is the struggle that you guys are facing here in Texas in particular? What do you think is the priority for Houston Normal? Well, the one thing that we're trying to do is decriminalization and legalization for uh, medicinal purpose. Uh, we know that Texas laws are very behind and uh, when we lobby and go to Austin we know that it's going to be very hard to get it for recreational. So that's one thing that I'm gearing up Houston Normal uh, to do to be prepared to go to Austin to talk to our lawmakers so that we could get some type of decriminalization going on and also for medical purposes there are sick people who need this you know, and so it's going to take all of us to get together to make this work. All organizations, we have to pull together. We cannot do this separately. And one of the things that to me is just mind boggling about Texas is that they claim to be about freedom and liberty. And it's, you know, this, it's all this, this sort of bluster, if you will. And yet they still enforce this law making plants illegal. Well, you know, um, it is a plant, just like you said, and it's not illegal either. I do not feel that cannabis is a drug. It's a natural herb, and it's something that should be available to us who needs healing. You know, um, Texas is very far behind on their thoughts. What it is, again, is that people need to get together to educate people about cannabis, that it's not harmful. It's not a harmful drug. You know, um, it's something that helps people uh, with pain, nausea, anxiety, everything, instead of living in a pill bottle. And that's what we're trying to get away from. Uh, we want quality of life. That's what I want, instead of living in a pill bottle. We want access to this beautiful plant that was given to us. Do you think Texas needs to just change the legislation? Is the culture ready, or do you need to change the culture here as well? Well, you know, it's going to be <laughs> very hard, Adam, to change the culture in Texas. You know, look at uh, what we're going through now. You know, they're even trying to ban CBD oil. You know, so you got every levels, every levels coming at you trying to ban cannabis laws, you know. So it's going to be very, very, very hard. But it's going to take dedication from uh, organizations, normal. Uh, you got Cannabis Over Carry Walk. You have a lot of organizations that's trying to get on the team in Texas to legalize cannabis. And it's going to take all of us together to make this work, to get Texas to get off of their asses. Can I say a curse word on here? You know, to get off of their asses and make the right choice and help people instead of hurting people. Uh, it's also financially great for Texas, too, if you really think about it, how much money that uh, we could make uh, from, you know, the cannabis being decriminalized and legalized. So Donald Trump said in his last State of the Union, uh, oh, oh, geez, you're answering the question already. No. But <laughs> Donald Trump said that he wants Americans who are terminally ill to be able to seek experimental treatments rather than going abroad. But, of course, he's not talking about marijuana legalization. He's not talking about ending the war on drugs. Does that, does that bother you at all as someone? Because you have yourself a, a, a personal medical motivation for this, and I don't want to, you know, violate any HIPAA laws here. But it, it is something that you talk about. When, when you see someone on the national stage like Donald Trump, do you have any hope for him? Or are, is it just, no, like... I, I, I think I know the answer to this one. Uh -huh. Well, you know, Donald, uh, how much of what he says you really can believe. You know, I think anything that he does is for himself, and I don't think that he's reaching out to anybody to help anyone. Okay. So, you know, personally, Adam, I'm really not concerned about what Donald Trump has to say, you know, because he doesn't have control over my life and how I want to heal myself. And my self-healing is through cannabis. Now, the government, they uh, have the patent number, U.S. Patent 6630507, and that makes it legal uh, for the government to use, and a lot of people don't know about that. So why don't they make it legal for the United States of America to use it? But these are things that they don't tell you. So I don't believe anything that Donald J. Trump is doing. I'm not falling for it.
Now, is it fair to say that you were kind of a, a mainstream or middle of the road Democrat by, by Houston standards and, and that you're coming towards libertarianism now? Um, <laughs> Uh, well, Don't worry, I'm not, I, I promise her we weren't going to turn this into a debate. <laughs> well, uh, along with being a precinct chairholder, uh, 320 for the Harris County Democratic Party, uh, you know, I've been a, a precinct chairholder for a couple of years now. Uh, when Bush became president, I noticed that there were issues and problems, and I wanted to stand up and try to make a change, especially being a black woman. And when I went to a lot of those meetings and uh, I was the only black person there and still that's happening, but it still takes someone to stand up and make a voice. Now, um, well, hold on. I will put you on the spot on one thing. Do you really think the Democrats give a damn more about ending the drug war than Republicans? Well, probably not, you know, so that's why I go to these meetings and I bring my used to normal sign and I bring my free the weed for those in East side to try to make a change. I'm pretty sure when I go to these meetings that I'm probably an outcast you know but I'm gonna stand up for what I believe in and I believe in freeing the wheat in Texas so I do want to kind of go back to my experience here at the Libertarian Convention you know um, it's very different from the Democrat I do see that you know but what drew me uh, to the Libertarian Party and to learn more is of course about uh, the legalization of really you guys want more decriminalization of cannabis hold, hold on no no I got I got to step in and defend libertarianism here because the technicalities people have different strategies in the Libertarian Party but what we all agree on is the supremacy of you own yourself you own your own body no one has a right to decide what you're allowed to put in your own body but you so that's a great way you know and a, a great gateway uh, for us to get healing for ourselves I mean I'm all for that you know so that's why you pretty much have my support uh, the freedom to choose your own lifestyle um, actually when I first heard Corey Walker speak um, I was just moved by his passion you know and how he wants freedom because we want freedom I want freedom. I want to be able to get my cannabis, uh, get my medicine without looking behind my back, wondering if the laws are following me or anything like that because I am black. So that's already going against me, you know. And I live that on a daily basis. But I'm going to get my medicine. Yeah. Adam. Now, this is the first thing I've heard. Of you. you had the experience of being the only black person at a Democratic Party meeting, yeah. too. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So do you think that's something about just politics in general being dominated by a white power structure or exclusivity or black people being disempowered? Well, yeah, most definitely. Uh, no one is really reaching out and going into the black communities and doing things to try to get them to come out and participate, you know, because there are certain things that you have to do. You got to get the right people uh, to make the decisions to know how to get into those communities and bring them out. You know, and uh, what's going to happen is a change. They need to see a change. They need to see someone that cares, not just one mayor or uh, just one lawmaker. They need to see a group of people making a difference. Yeah. Now, see, a lot of libertarians, I and mean, we are a, a white male INTJ dominated movement, obviously. And there's a lot of hand wringing over this and a lot of, you know, nervousness and discomfort in, in talking to people who don't fit that mold. But it, what you just said that it's, it's true in the Democratic Party, obviously, and I know from my experience in the Republican Party, it's true there. Even being Jewish in the Republican Party isn't as, isn't as nice as it sounds to, to, you know, to, to a lot of people. But uh, that, you know, that a lot of libertarians think, oh my gosh, we have a black people problem. Oh, we don't have enough black people here. And, it's, and, and, and I think that that kind of leads us to, to being afraid of being falsely accused of being racist. And I think it's one of the most important things about libertarianism is that it's about the universality of human rights. It's the most anti, it's, it's the only anti, like really deliberately anti-racist political philosophy that says race is irrelevant. You're a human being, you have those rights inherent as a human being. And, and what I see is that we don't have a problem, but we have an opportunity yeah. because the black community in America or the black demographic is one that is most disadvantaged by government. There's a natural alliance there. Perhaps we, 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 have, an, we have failed in the past, but I know that in order to succeed, to win as libertarians, we need to be actively welcoming and bringing black people in and reaching out to the black community and saying, look, 
you're victims of government, especially because government allows racism to be manifest. Racism is real. Government makes it worse. And we want to get rid of this huge aggravating factor that is really, I mean, most of what you see as racism is a problem in America today is not it's not the snide comments It's not the 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 the, the politically correct bullshit. It's cops arresting black people more than white people, right? Exactly. I mean, I've been in situations like that before and being the executive director of Houston Normal, I've had people come and tell me stories, you know, that they've been in situations to where, you know, uh, maybe uh, they are black. They went to jail. They had weight on them, but their white friend didn't, you know, and they would actually tell me about it, you know. So these things are real and it happened to me, you know, but I do want to say one thing. To my black people, you know, the Libertarian Party, they do offer a lot of things that we would be interested in. Uh, the only thing is that as Libertarians, um, you need to go out and reach more to the black people and give them the message because I got the message. And that's why I'm here today, because um, it said you guys said a lot of things that I was very interested in about freedom and that's something that we as black people have been fighting for freedom over 200 years or more you know so what I think we should do is reach out and I'm willing to help you um, I do want to talk about our summit that we're going to do uh, we're going to do some traveling and we're going to do some meeting to where we can gather a lot of black people together and we could talk about the libertarian party and the different things that they have to offer to open doors uh, for black people in the political field because there is room for us you know we just need to step out and reach out and do it Absolutely. And the other thing is, as libertarians, we like to pretend that we can be perfectly colorblind. And because our philosophy truly is colorblind, that we can ignore the issues of racism. We can just get out this message to everybody and whoever is ready to hear it. But racism is real. It is. The drug war is not just criminal. It's a racist criminal racket. And it has to end. Latanya, thank you for being a part of this and thank you for helping end it. And, and do you have a website you want to yes, plug specifically? I yes, I do. If you want to join us, we ask you that you get on HoustonNormal.org. That's our main website. And you can also find us on Facebook, Houston Normal. And we're also on Twitter. And if you do follow us, you'll find out all of our events that we have coming up. We stay busy because we want to free the weed for those in need. We want to free the weed in Texas. And don't panic. It's organic. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.